Okay, hold on, guys. We have a special treat for you. This is Chris looking for his medicine cabinet. So, so far we've found tampons, earplugs, acne, acne creams, earwax remover, and earplugs. We're still looking for the band-aids. So, okay, right now your zits and your ears are fine, Chris. So Chris is considering using a tampon around his finger because he's bleeding. Oh, this is a wet towel. What are, what are you doing? <laughs> what will the wet towel do? Always clean. <laughs> How is that better? Dermatologist so, tested. So Chris just like <laughs> took away the um, what is it? The uh, Scott towel paper. The dirty, dirty Scott towel. <laughs> now I'm using the always clean. Yeah. And it says right here, like, right next to the asterisk, to be gentle to skin. See, okay. uh, yeah, oh so he replaced God. it with a smaller piece of paper, except it's a wet towel, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> the paper napkin that he used to cover his thumb does look like a used tampon. <laughs> hey, it's starting to, now. <laughs> look, the new one, too. I think we're good. Let's go. April Fools, everyone! Today we're gonna do comedy! Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. I was gonna say .com, I'm just so used to saying it. With Nicholas, I'm the Vegan Correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, Editor-in-Chief of Idiomatic and Film Critic. Hey, Nick, you know what's the most important thing about comedy? I don't know. Timing! Oh! <laughs> Uh, you got me there. Yep. What sort of comedy do you like and what works for you? What makes a great comedy for you, Nick? Well, it also it mostly relies on the type of humor. There are certain types of humor I like and some I don't. And it really varies on people. For example, I really like, you know, slapstick to a certain degree can be fun if it's well done. And I said to a certain degree, I would not watch a two-hour slapstick comedy that would just annoy me to death. Uh, I really enjoy witty banter between people. You know, that's fun. Uh, and if characters are fun, you know, funny characters, kind of like Kramer and Seinfeld in the early seasons, that that's funny. Okay, what about you? Well, yeah, I agree with you. Um, it is subjective. It is it is one of the things where like there's some things people will find funny. There's some things I and uh, that I will and they don't, and that's just fine. That's everybody's humor. And like personally, I like the rapid fire dialogue in particular. I think. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, Robert Downey Jr. In, in Iron Man, for example, or Robert Downey Jr. And Val Kilmer did it in um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's just that sort of, you know, almost 50s and uh, like rapid fire dialogue. That always works for me when the jokes come faster than I can really understand them. Yeah. I find that, that really funny. Yeah. Uh, I like pop culture references. That's why Scream is one of my favorite comedies. Scream, not scary movie. Scream. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I also like satire a whole bunch. I, I like the political comments. I like uh, Thank You for Smoking, for example, is a great comedy for me. <clears throat> but uh, there, I think there are some universal things that uh, really do make a comedy work overall. And I think one of them is <clears throat> the actors. you got to have likable actors. Well, they have to be funny, obviously. You have to yeah. have that, that timing. But they also have to be likable. Uh, if you don't like the person, no matter how funny they are, I don't think you're going to laugh. I can see that, because uh, a lot of people like Jack Black. I cannot stand that actor, and probably his comedies are really funny. I don't find them funny at all, and I've seen, I've watched them with other people laughing next to me, and and it's like, what what is so funny about this? He's just annoying. Yeah, um, I'm one of the people who actually still has a lot of time for Jack Black, although less and less. <laughs> like, <laughs> the more I, I the, like the more he does that same shtick over and over again, the more tiresome it gets, which gets to another point. Yeah. It's got to remain fresh, you know. We, yeah. If if we've seen that joke before, it stops being funny, uh Will Ferrell. <coughs> <laughs> What's that? A goofy sports movie? I wonder who's playing in it. <laughs> Could it be Will Ferrell? <laughs> um yeah, no, and I feel the same way. I, I think, uh, you know, whenever they uh, they have uh, Mel Gibson trying to be funny in uh, Le Lethal Weapon, because I don't like him anymore, I go back to these old movies, and when he's doing his funny shtick with Murtaugh there, uh, with Danny Glover, I'm like, F you, man. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. it just I, because I hate the guy now. 
I guess you're not a fan of uh, Lethal Weapon movies either. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I used to be. And it's yeah. like I can't stand them anymore just because well. he's in it and a lot of it relies on comedy. Yeah, exactly. Likeable characters is another thing. It's likable actors is one thing. Likeable characters is another. Uh, uh, an, an example of that is um, <clears throat> Jeffster uh, in Chuck. Uh, Jeff and Lester. Yeah. These people in real life, if I met them, I would hit them with a shovel. And so whenever they have their little shtick in every Chuck episode, I groan. <laughs> I, just, I can't stand it. And I understand how it's funny intellectually. But I'm, I, I also, there's a part of me going like, in real life, I would want to kill them. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, if you you know you, you wouldn't like that character in real life, it, it's kind of you know like no, you you're just annoying. You're not funny. You know, it's there. There's a thin line between annoying and funny, and you can't cross it or else it, it's completely ruined. Yeah, I, Big Bang Theory often crosses that line for me as well. Like Sheldon, he starts off funny and then I, it, he loses me by just pushing it one step too far with the the shtick of always having Leonard being his victim there. Yeah, I can see that. I kind of stopped watching that show yet too because it, it got annoying and less nerdy too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, and this is, I think is more, uh, per perhaps a little bit more personal to me. I like relatable situations. I think if it's completely out there and zany, I completely disconnect. For example? Well, um, Scary Movie is a good example where they took the joke that already existed in Scream And at Scream, it was right at the level where I think it's funny. And then they zanified it. <laughs> <coughs> and it stopped being funny for me. And it's like, it's weird because it's the same joke. It's just the same joke taken to the extreme. But taken to the extreme is where it completely loses me. Oh, I see. Uh, well, the, the, there's a the classic thing where with uh, Ghostface getting the crap beaten out of him every time he tries to kill someone. Yeah. And that's a running joke in Scream that had me howling when I saw the movie in theaters. He gets hit in the groin and all of that. And it's like, it's very, very funny because you usually don't see that with killers. Yeah. And in Scary Movie, he has a piano fall on his head and then a plan and then a house. And I'm like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to getting hit in the groin. <laughs> I can. It's a, I don't like it, but I can relate to it. How often does it happen to you on a weekly basis, Dimitri? <laughs> well, I'm Asian. I come on to a lot of white women. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you're not. You're really Asian. I am. I am Asian. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I've been talking a while. There, were there other points for you? No, no. You, you pretty much covered it. I mean, what I really like in humor though is variety. I, if you know if you can have a movie with different kinds of humor in it and not the same thing over and over and over again, it'll be funny. If it, you just have you know a movie where you're trying to you know make gross off humor or something and it's gross off humor for two hours, no, I'm, I, it, it it's just going to be annoying after the first half hour. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I hate gross off humor. Once in a while, it's funny, you know, maybe one or two jokes per movie. But having it the whole movie, it it it, it just becomes boring at the end. It's pretty much the same for everything, like uh, you know quick jokes like that like you were mentioning if you have only two hours of that i think it would get you know really boring after a while and pretty much get a headache too yeah maybe i'm not sure maybe <clears throat> i do watch an awful lot of gilmore girls and that is all they have in gilmore girls and i do enjoy it uh, but you I have to be able to pull it off is the thing with that you know? i guess yeah but i i, I like variety mm -hmm. and you know when you're watching one thing um that's why sometimes you you watch comedy specials mm -hmm. and You know, half an hour is good. An hour, you're stretching it. Two hours special, you're like, oh, no. You're, you're, you're really pulling it now. It, it, it's really not funny anymore. I'm going to go ahead and call Buffalo Poop on that. Really? Yeah, because we both watch House. And you're the one who always complains whenever House, the series, deviates from the formula of having House abuse everyone and find a solution. Whenever it deviates from that, you're the first one to complain. Yeah, but I watch it because of that, and I don't watch six hours of House in a row. I watch an hour of it, because I'm kind of expecting that. Um, it's like some people hate him, but I like Dane Cook as, you know, as a comedian. Mm. And I would watch, like, specials half an hour, an hour, but sometimes, you know, two hours of it, okay, that's too much. Yeah, I will admit Vicious Circle, I think. Yeah. Terrific show. Uh, very fun to watch. Um But I watched in two parts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, a variety is good in comedy. I agree. All right, then. I guess it's time to go to... 
underrated picks. Choose fun. Why don't you go first? All right. Uh, underrated. Uh, first one is Curb Your Enthusiasm where, by Larry, Larry David. Uh, it's basically exaggerated days in the life of Larry David, who he feels like everything goes wrong around him. It's re- If you know the, the character, he, he, he was basically who George Costanza on Seinfeld was based on. Everything around him, you know, fails miserably. He tries to be a nice guy. He tries to be helpful, but it always blows up in his face. It is kind of painful to watch because uh, you know you, you can see he's a nice guy but it always fails but it's kind of a funny painful it, it, it's really a good show but it is very much appreciated yeah but it, it, I don't know it's on HBO so not a lot of people see it so I guess oh well, fair enough I can see why it's, it could be underrated because not everybody has access to it alright okay, fair enough but you know whether or not it falls into the mighty underrated category it certainly is a really good car recommendation because it is a good show yeah, definitely. And it, it does feel a little bit like what Seinfeld could have been sometimes. It does feel that way. I've yeah. certainly heard that comment a lot. Yeah. Um, all right, since you named a sitcom, I'm going to go with a sitcom as well. I'm going to go with Scrubs Med School, which is the season nine of Scrubs. But they renamed it because they totally changed the concept of it. Um Instead of being Zach Braff and company doing the same jokes they've been doing for eight seasons before, they graduated the main cast. They, well, they took out half the cast. They graduated the remaining cast and made them teachers at a, at a medical school and introduced a new principal cast of students sort of suffering these professors. And it, it is funny because you get to see Zach Braff as this sort of clingy, touchy-feely, I want to be your friend teacher that nobody can stand. <laughs> And Dr. Cox, of course, remains the hard-ass teacher, but they, again, they found a new angle on it because now he's found somebody that he actually likes and he, that person becomes his protege and, like, being Dr. Cox's protege is almost worse than being hated by him, <laughs> which is really great. Like, they found a really fresh angle. It was more like Police Academy with doctors than anything else. Okay. And, uh, well, Police Academy 3 with doctors. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it was really funny, and unfortunately nobody watched it because everybody called it Zombie Scrubs because it's the Scrubs was supposed to end a year before, and nobody really gave it a chance, which is really unfortunate. Okay. And of course, ABC didn't really advertise it as much as they should have. Why Zombie? And because the series is supposed to be dead, and it's still oh, going. That's ridiculous. And it's too bad, because if people had given it a chance, I, I think they would have liked it. And it, they have a chance now. It's on DVD, and it's certainly worth a rental, definitely. I'm I'm gonna buy it myself. All right. Well, we can switch to movies now. Mm-hmm. A comedy I really liked that seemed like really silly was Dodgeball, and critics didn't like it. But Dodgeball was funny. It seems it's gonna be like just only slapsticks, people receiving balls in the face, and oh, it's funny. But it has a lot more, you know, very varied humor in it. I thought it was pretty funny. They just kept the slapsticks to a, a tolerable level, you know, not too much of it. It was it was pretty high, but still. <coughs> It was, and it was well made too. It wasn't, uh, you know, they had very good comedians for that. And the actual, you know, ending that was supposed to be is even funnier than the actual real ending of, of the movie if you have the DVD. So it, it's a pretty good uh, movie. Yeah, I agree. The alternate ending is the ending that really fits the movie because one of the things you mentioned that there's different types of comedies, and one of the principal uh, types of comedy that's not advertised in any of the, uh, well, that is not advertised actually, yeah. <laughs> that is not advertised in any of the adverts. It's not advertising the adverts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is that it is not so much a parody, but a satire of the of the sports movie, where they really make fun of the different beats of the sports movie. Yeah, exactly. And those jokes really work well because the full story uh, the title is uh, "Dodgeball: A True Underdog Story." Yeah. And there is that running joke of making like, okay, well, this is the the movie beat that happens in the underdog movie, but this is what would happen in real life. And this is what happens to these characters. And, yeah. And exactly. they do that a lot, and it it it's always very very funny. Yeah. That's so, a good movie. Unfortunately, all all that was advertised for that movie it was like people receiving balls in the face, mm. and you know that that that's you know. It's part of the movie, but it's not all of it. And when it when it is in the movie, it's actually pretty funny. A lot more funny than just seeing a, a random advert of people receiving balls in the face. That's not funny. Oh yeah, and that's because Brian Cox is throwing the the ball, and uh, Alan Tudyk is receiving them. And these are just two terrific character actors that just meld with the characters so well. I mean, there's nothing funnier than seeing an accomplished actor like Brian Cox throwing balls in people's faces. Yes. <laughs> it's it's sort of like imagine the. Uh, um, imagine Morgan Freeman doing that essentially it's sort of the same effect it's really funny 
Uh, and the cameos were good in that movie too. Mm-hmm. Funny cameos that were really short and really effective. So I really like that movie. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I agree, I agree that that movie made me laugh. It, it, it's a good comedy. Uh, yeah, movies as well. Movies. Um, I have. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Ghost Town. Um, Ricky Gervais' first American movie. And since he hasn't made British movies, so I suppose Ricky Gervais' first movie. Okay. Uh, now Ricky Gervais, you all know him, creator of The Office, uh, creator of Extras. He's a really talented comedian, very funny. Not as big a fan of his podcasts and reality shows. Like that doesn't really work as well for me because yeah. he seems to find his one friend way funnier than I do. <laughs> <laughs> But the stuff that he actually writes, his actually creative stuff, I think, are pretty genius. And Ghost Town was a movie that everybody was like, oh, like Ricky Gervais is like such an edgy person, the character, and he plays a Hollywood movie and he plays a nice guy. Wow, he sold out. And like, no, he just did something different, you know? And I yeah. applaud that. <laughs> it's actually a really sweet comedy with Tia Leone and Greg Kinnear. The story is, Ricky Gervais is, is a dentist who doesn't like people. He's not a people person. He's yeah. very sarcastic and aggressive and, and just he just manages to insult everyone around him without necessarily meaning to. It's just that he's just that kind of abrasive person and just insular person. And one day he has a near-death experience that allows him to see ghosts. That, and all these ghosts want him to help people. But because he's sort of this very loner type insular person, he really doesn't want to. <laughs> And eventually one of the ghosts, Greg Kinnear, convinces him to help uh, help him with his wife because his wife is about to marry this douchebag. Uh, Greg Kinnear's wife is about to marry this douchebag and he enlists the help of Tim Kinnear to stop it. The twist is, actually, Greg Kinnear, the ghost, is the douchebag and the new guy in his wife's life is actually a really good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so they get stuck in that situation. It's actually really, really sweet. It has really touching ideas about what what makes death painful and, and how imperfect people are and at the same time it has this really just these really biting moments of humor where with it with that premise where the people you thought would be douchebags are not and all the roles are reversed so it, it doesn't follow that usual formula it's actually a really really sweet and funny movie that was my pick all right <laughs> i have not seen that movie so i can't comment on it so so i guess now it's time for the Electric Boogaloo Factory. Favorite part of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, for those of you who are new, The Electric Boogaloo Factory is when we take a franchise that doesn't deserve a sequel, or a ninth a sequel, <laughs> <laughs> and we try to make a sequel uh, out of it. Uh, what did you pick? I would pick uh, Meet the Fockers. And since it's very easy, you just need a catchy title. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Dead Fockers. Uh, they're, they're mourning the death of the Robert De Niro character and you know all you need for that movie is just a bunch of names with Fokker behind it so you can have like Happy Fokker Dirty Fokker P. Diddy Fokker and you know <laughs> that's all you need for the movie there is one flaw in your in your synopsis there nobody would mourn the death of the Robert De Niro character <laughs> I guess his daughter would because her his daughter has like this attachment to him that everything he, he does is normal and I don't get that but you know she would mourn him so <coughs> the Ben Stiller character is forced to go to the funeral with her and you know he brings a bunch of fuckers with him mm. and that would be the movie <laughs> yeah I can just see the eulogy like I, I honestly can see it the way that the, these movies tend to be written where he goes like I know that you know we weren't really related by blood so this Ben Stiller about Robert De Niro but in my mind, he was a fucker. He was a great big fucker. I can so that see them going with that joke throughout the entire sermon, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I would not watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, my turn. Um, yeah, like you, I'm going to pick a franchise that has quite a few uh, sequels. I'm going to do the seventh and eighth sequel to American Pie. Alright. Two sequels in one electric boogaloo entry. It occurs to me that they've done pretty much everything you can do about, you know, male and female sexuality in the American Pie series. Well, less female, but sort of, kind of, with the Alison Hannigan character. Yeah. But what they haven't done is homosexual uh, relationships and sexuality. So I think that's what I would want to uh, tackle. So I would, like, release two movies at the same time, or dealing with that. Uh, one for the gay males and one for the gay females. <clears throat> so it would be American Clam and American Corn Dog. Awesome. I think so. 
So, like, both movies would follow a group of lesbians and a group of gay men who really want to get laid. So they go out, and because they're not straight, they just get laid, because it's really that easy when you're not, <laughs> you're not straight. <laughs> the end. <laughs> How long are your movies? Because, <laughs> you know, in the first movie, the whole point is getting laid. And at the end, they realize that, yeah, okay, maybe getting laid is not that important. Mm. And they get laid anyway. Yeah. So, and then they go try to get laid in the second movie all over again. Exactly. So, um, how long does it take for your characters to realize that, you know, hey, we can get laid between each other? <laughs> it, it really would take that long. It would be... Want an F? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I guess that's it for the Electric Boogaloo Factory and uh, the podcast. So, if you have any questions, comments you want to share with us, write us at mail at idiomanic.com or post a comment at idiomanic.com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. And we will see you next time. <laughs>